Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Welcome all Texas fan and welcome Arkansas Razorback fans. Hello, how you doing? Welcome to the channel. And we are excited to visit Fayetteville. I, I, I passionately call it Vietnam. Uh, and, and you guys should take that with a, with a, you know, badge of honor. I should, you know, because, you know, it's going to be a hostile environment. It, you know, we're going to war over there in your area and you guys aren't playing around. So we're excited to break down Texas versus Arkansas, uh, September 11th, which is going to be the 20th anniversary of September 11th. So we're going to get into all that. First off, I do want to give a shout out to our wonderful sponsors over at BUSR, BUSR.com. Go ahead and check them out now, BUSR.com slash fanatic. Use the promo code NFL100FP. 100% free play. They're matching everything you guys are putting in for deposits. So you guys want to take a gander at this particular game and, and stick around for our predictions, you know, let me know what you think. See if it adds, adds up and if it makes sense to you. You know, of course, bet responsibly, but if you're going to do it, hit up BUSR. We encourage it. Now, before I get into, in all seriousness, though, a um, few things. So, 20th anniversary of 9-11. And uh, Steve Sarkeesian was asked about this today. I did not know his cousin died in uh, in the towers. And uh, he, you know, he had some some interesting insight and, and just I'm sure a lot of the thing, the reflective conversations that Steve will have with his group and Sam Pittman has with his group will, will stay in house, of course. Um, but, you know, we always, you know, the tagline is never forget. Right. And for for me, my father living in New York, were you in that part of the country at the time? You were already in New I York, was. right? So, I was. You could smell the you could smell the burning from Long in Long Island where I was at. So I couldn't get in contact with my father who was uh who had a meeting in Manhattan that day. Couldn't get in contact with him for a year or a year, excuse me, a whole day. So a whole almost 24 hours before I heard from my father. And uh, it was so all, everybody has their story. And, and I know uh, folks will, will share theirs in the comments. Um, I was in Maryland. My, my English teacher, her father was uh, seriously, severely injured in the Pentagon. Uh, so just across the board, I mean, 20 years, 20 years since that happened. And, and when I say reflect with the players, most of them. You know, none of them are going to remember, right? Like they were either in diapers, and at, we're now at the point, which is crazy for us to say, that they weren't even born. They were, and they're studying it, yeah, like in a book or online. They have to go and look up what happened. So they're they're far, far enough to remove. Just like at some point, people were far enough removed from the Oklahoma City bombings, right, and things that have happened in the course of history, but. Uh, the personal line was more for the players, or I'm sorry, for the coaches, for the fans. You know, so it's going to be, you know, we're there. We're, we're excited for the football game. And I think everybody is excited that, you know, you know, life is where it's at moving forward. But at this period of time, with as divisive as things have gotten in this country, I, I would like for us to really just be reflective of that. And Tran, you know, you were in Long Island, as you mentioned what, 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 what's your reflections when it comes to 9-11 and what comes to mind for you? Uh, I remember that a lot of it was yesterday, honestly, because I was going up for morning practice where it, I, I can tell you the exact day it was. It was Tuesday um, because we were, we were wearing just shells and it was our walkthrough on Tuesday morning. That was the one that we just walked through our routes, what we were going to do, our formations we were going to do. We got up there and our athletic director was there. Uh, he was in tears. He was saying we were attacked and practice and school was canceled. Go be with your loved ones, which we were we were actually prepping for our, our one of our rivals, Stony Brook. And um, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it, to me, it was just shocking, like because uh, our coach, our coach had people that worked there and he was trying to get in touch with them. And, you know, my. The people I, uh, my friend Kenny, his family had people that passed away in, in 9-11 as well. So it, it, it was just an emotional time and it was just something that I, 
like I couldn't grasp the fact that that was happening. And it was so close to me at the same time. And it affected so many people that were close to me. And, um, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's shocking to me that it's 20 years ago. It Your doesn't seem Kenny, like that. May I ask what he does for work today? He's a New York firefighter. So enough said, you know, uh, he knows a lot of people that lost people, uh, lost really close people fighting that and trying to uh, save people in the, mm-hmm. in the rubble. So, well, you know, hopefully everybody can take a moment throughout the day. And you know, I hate to start the video with something so, you know, emotional, but it's important. Um, and, and, you know, it's important to share those stories with your kids, especially when, you know, as they get old enough to understand that. I know these coaches are going to share that with their players. And, you know, it's, it's as important as any day, you know, that we have to, to really reflect and, and, and memorialize and hopefully get closer um, with, with one another. So we have a football game. We're going to, we're going to Fayetteville and um, Sam Pittman. I, I wanted to kind of start with just the outlook from, from big picture. So apparently he, he thinks we just have Bijan on our team. That's it. <laughs> He, uh, if you guys don't know what Chad is talking about in his presser, he was reflecting on Bijan Robinson and being complimentary, but almost too complimentary, and got Bijan Robinson and Deshaun Jameson confused. And it is just the, let the trash talking commence, right? And not only that, you have Pro Football Focus who's sharing pictures because Bijan's, you know, top five graded back this week. Um, Walter Camp off of the play of the week and Big 12 play of the week, all this type of stuff. Bijan's Bijan. But apparently we still don't know how to what photograph works for him because they put up a picture of Trey Watson from the Sugar Bowl. Oh and my it's goodness. like my good I've never seen a player who is the face of a big school where they never ever get the photo correct. Or the, they, he keeps getting confused with another person. Now, I'm not going to be disrespectful towards Sam Pitt. I, I think it's funny and we should give him a lot of shit for it. Yeah. I'm with it. And I agree with you. I do know coaches, when they look at the – A, Sam Pittman was worried about Rice. And I know that sounds crazy, but as, as the head coach, you have to focus one game at, at a mm-hmm. time. Your grad assistants, your scouting department, your analyst – They're the ones that are the experts on the upcoming opponent. And then you go into installation. On top of that, coaches look at numbers. So Sam Pittman, when he's looking at, like he knows who be, obviously he knows who B. John Robinson is, but he's looking a lot at numbers. So a lot of these coaches, Steve Sarkeesian is probably the same way where, you know, before, by Wednesday, they'll know everything there is to know about Texas, tendencies, strengths, weaknesses, the whole thing. But if you're asking them off the cuff right after a game, you know, then then you get the quote that you got from Coach Pitt. Runs the ball, catches the ball, <laughs> kick kickoff return, punt return, throws the ball, kicks the ball. <laughs> he didn't yo, say the last couple parts. I'm just being Yo, <laughs> yo, if you really want to exaggerate, Sam it sounded like Booby Miles' uncle in Friday Night Lights. It's truth. And he can pass. <laughs> it's like that's not the same. That's not the same guy, bro. That's not the same guy. Uh, it, it, I, I like Sam Pittman, offensive former offensive mm-hmm. line coach, very well respected in the SEC. He, you know, just the demeanor and how he he looks and everything. When Arkansas was, you know, at least in my, uh, you know. Um, in my early thirties, when, when they were, you know, under Houston nut and Darren McFadden was going to Heisman trophy ceremonies, they had a certain, they had certain characteristics about them. They had enormous offensive linemen. I mean, this is even going back to when they had uh, Jason Peters, like at playing tight end, right. Who became, you know, hall of fame left tackle. So they had enormous offensive linemen, they had enormous tight ends. 
They had typically like an athletic quarterback, somebody like Matt Jones. And then they had running backs for days. And then they had a massive defensive line. And I already see Arkansas getting back to that. And I think if you're an Arkansas fan, you definitely have to be encouraged by how Sam Pittman is, is building this out uh, uh, as he took over for Chad Morris. By the way, Chad Morris over at Allen, Rest they peace. took an L on <laughs> Rest Friday. Rest Chad Morris. So, so, so people are already in the high school ranks and the Allen Eagles over there are already like, Coach Morris, what's good? <laughs> What happened? But, uh, what happened with you to Clemson? <laughs> dude, what happened to the guy that was at Clemson? What happened to the guy that was at Lake Travis? What happened to that guy? Anyway, we digress. Uh, this staff is interesting, Tran. It's a fantastic staff. You got Sam Pittman, Barry Odom, uh, Captain Tape Knuckles. Um, we, we got uh, like Barry Odom, Odom is the defense coordinator we wanted back, back in the day. Before Chris Ash, <laughs> yeah, before Chris Ash, yeah, we wanted him. We, that was my that was my number one target was Barry Odom when he got yeah. fired because Missouri was good defensively. Yeah, they, couldn't, they couldn't score. They couldn't score. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we uh, they they have an also, and I think that that's a staff that will actually get it done uh, with it within the com- coming years. Honestly. Uh, they're good. They're great recruiters. They they understand the fertile grounds of Texas, Arkansas, and their surrounding areas. Um, Barry, Barry Odom's a great defensive coordinator, and you could see that from the from the defensive back play that they have going on here. Um, I, I am a little bit worried about that. With 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 it being a hostile environment, it's their first sellout since 2017, and not only that, they're now selling more tickets for standing room only. So they're trying. They're trying to get seventy five thousand in that stadium, to 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 beat down on their not rivals, to, to try to curse out their not rivals. This is where I need to give Arkansas fans some smoke. Y'all got on my video, on my channel, <laughs> Sorry. on my channel, when I was talking to the OU people. When I was talk- shout out to you know horns down podcast Chris and and Seth over there. I'm talking Chris and Seth. We're just doing a Big Twelve preview, and they're asking me questions about Arkansas. And Chris, Chris was the one that made the Battle of the Bastards comment, not me, for clarification. Okay, Chris was the one that said you and Ada is Battle of the Bastards. Whatever. Okay, y'all got offended about that. Then you got offended about me bringing up the fact that we used to whoop that ass back in the day. And yes, I brought up the last time we played was the Texas Bowl with Charlie Strong, Tyrone Soups, and y'all whooped our ass. Nobody was ducking that. We did not miss that detail. That information was given on the video. Here are the facts. You guys, your whole season, you guys want to beat Texas, okay? Stop acting like you don't care because it's disingenuous. Not only do you not care, but... Your first sellout since 2017 comes when we're coming to town. So I didn't realize we were the stimulus package for Fayetteville, Arkansas, but I guess we are. And I know it sounds disrespectful, but this is disrespectful times. We're about to go to war with the enemy. So the stimulus package is coming to town, which is known as the University of Texas Longhorns. Why do you think everybody else in the Big 12 is pissed off? We leave in, bro. (laughs) <laughs> First sell out since 2017. Y'all don't have the same energy for everybody else. Stop pretending. I ra- I rather talk to the Arkansas fan who's like, yeah, I hate Texas. I w- want nothing more than to beat you. That's the person that's not lying to themselves. To sit up here and act like, you guys act like y'all are not going to rush the field if you beat us. Can, can we be real for a second? Like, they will tear it out of their goalposts in Vietnam if they get the dub. Stop being like you're they're acting as if, and not all, but some of these Arkansas fans are acting as if, man, uh, Texas just another game. How come y'all don't sell out the games for Bama when Bama comes to town? How come you don't sell out the games when LSU comes? We know y'all play AM, you know, y'all do the, the neutral site, the neutral at, site, at Jerry man. World. That's fine, but it's 2017, but all of a sudden. 
little Texas that's overrated and, and all this and that, all of a sudden there's a sellout. Interesting. Anyway, we move forward, Trent. I just needed to address a few things and then set the record straight here on Fanatic Perspective. <laughs> hey, it's all your side and monologue. Yeah. So <laughs> let's, get into, let's get into some of the personnel. I need to calm down here. Jalen Catalan. Fan- Fantastic football Fantastic. Player. All right. Look, hey, he, he's won me over. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that at the end of the season he's in the Thorpe, Thorpe conversation. Um, I think just last last game he had two interceptions mm-hmm. and one he almost housed it w- with a great run where he broke tackles. Um, his coverage ability, I think he was the second leading tackler on the team. Yeah. Problem. He is a problem. Yeah, I have him circled. I have him circled completely on on my. Uh, if I'm the offensive coordinator, this guy, <laughs> this guy, this is the guy you don't want to mess with. You, this is the guy you don't want to test. And you got to give credit too to Barry Odom and how he's built this defense out. And and I know there's going to be more in depth breakdowns that are coming of exactly how he's being utilized. Uh, but when they're playing three high safety and he's kind of just playing center field and roaming and getting to freelance, but he's not just freelancing. He's super aggressive. He's coming up. His run fits are fantastic. He tackles well in the open field and he's an explosive defensive football player. He's an explosive safety. He's turning himself into an excellent prospect. He was a fantastic prospect coming out of high school. Texas wanted him bad. We missed Tom Herman, that staff we missed out. He's at Arkansas now and he's becoming a phenomenal football player and somebody who we have to worry about. You look at Brooks on one side, who's, who's uh, number nine in the, in the nickel, very good mm-hmm. tackler. They're, they're all very aggressive, and, and but it funnels, and I think Sark did a good job of explaining this, how they funnel kind of in the middle of the field and then outwards, right? So uh, Jalen Catalan in the middle of the defense, bumper pull, mm-hmm. Grant Morgan, those guys playing very well. We talk about our inside linebacking play, with DeMarvin Overshone and Luke Brockemeyer, they're getting that t- same type of production with, with Morgan and Bumper Pool. Now, I believe Bumper Pool is suspended the first half. For so, targeting. Uh, one of the Henry brothers, I think, is going to fill in. And we'll see how that, you know, how that affects the, bu- the ball game. But they have some big defensive tackles, uh, some, some really big guys up front that make it easier for them to play football, make it easier for those guys to see and fly the ball. I know it was rice, but rice, you know, they, they, they shut, they turned the faucet off on the rice run game. Um, and we're impressed. I think we're, we're impressed with mm-hmm. what we're seeing. And and I saw the, the so, things I saw of why I wanted Barry Odom as my defensive coordinator. Now things turned out. I mean, they didn't turn out ideal, but Chris Ash was, you know, he did what he did. He was good. But, um, you know, four two five attacking scheme, playing those safeties up high, letting them roam. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for the Texas offense and Steve Sarkeesian. So what what's going to be a real big challenge right now is, is their size on the defensive line versus our inconsistent offensive line play. And also, I want to see how our wide receivers get off of press because these are very physical defensive backs and they take chances. With that said, if they are in man, you can't you can break them down. If you're able to get any separation, big plays big plays can't happen. So I can I could see a double move from an Xavier Worthy getting open, uh, getting open, or Jordan Winnington. You know, Joshua Moore has the ability to do that as well, of course. So I can see bigger plays this game as opposed to last game because they were more so focused on making sure to keep the keep the uh, wide receivers in front of them their athletes in front of them. This one, every single highlight I saw on defense was the defensive back was on their hip and they were trying to break on the ball. They were trying to create those turnovers. So maybe we can uh, use that aggressiveness against them by hitting them with those double moves. What's interesting is Steve Sarkeesian is facing a familiar opponent, an opponent where they, you know, he, he just came not just from the SEC, but the SEC West mm-hmm. and you know, I know it's Bama, but they won 52-3 last year. And they haven't, you know, he didn't have those issues, um, 
you know, with that group. Now, in that game, that was the game where Devontae Smith had that big punt return, I think in the second quarter, and it just blew the whole game open. And and they were able to get Jason McClellan in the game and all these. There's a lot of backups on Alabama that just had a really, really big day. Um, but it is interesting, you know, Sark kind of getting – being really, really familiar with what they're doing as much as we like Barry Odom, as much as we like Sam Pittman, I think that's a dangerous spot if you're Arkansas, right? Because I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to say this. I like, cause I think we're going to get into some of the Arkansas offensive personnel, but in terms of our offense attacking their defense, I like some of their pieces. I don't think that's enough to slow us down for four quarters. I don't think that's – I think I think the, the, the competition here for Texas, you're going to have to avoid Jalen Jalen uh, mm-hmm. on as much as yep. possible throwing the football and, 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 and play football. Don't, don't, don't be scared, but, like, you know, just, just proceed with caution. But the matchup here for Texas isn't Texas versus Arkansas. It's Texas versus Texas in terms of their mental. Or Texas is, is – Mental is on point, and they're able to deal with the hostility and the crowd noise. And this is why the the question Steve Sarkeesian was asked today about Hudson Card, how he deals with, it, and he answered with Hudson Card's demeanor, and you know he, him being even killed. He's not worried about that. I'll take it one step further. Hudson Card at Lake Travis, he's passed every test since then. So why would I think that this is the test he would all of a sudden fail? You see what I'm saying? Like every every time he's been thrown in, like he he essentially got thrown into a playoff game. Again, I, I think I used this example before against Katie in the rain in San Antonio, and led the team to a win. He got thrown in in the, in the state championship game. Played well, put up thirty some points. So every test that's been given to him, he looked comfortable in DKR. Now you're you're saying, hey, go on the road, SEC opponent. These these people first sell out in four years. What do you got, Hudson Card? I don't, I expect them to just as long as he has that same even keel demeanor, and he's out there saying, "Hey, how can I distribute the ball to my playmakers? How can I take care of the football and overcome just some of that energy?" Texas will be fine in this game. <laughs> They'll be fine. They'll win if, if as long as they do those. Like if you get into the thing and you throw a pick to cattle on right off the bat. Or, you know, you do some balls tipped and Ladarius Bishop, who's uh, other corner on the other side, number 24, comes up with the football in his hands. And now all, of it's, all hell breaks loose. That's when you start giving teams like this hope, right? And then if you marry that hope with the energy and, and we start to feel doubt, that's when we get in trouble. That's what Texas offense, to me, is competing against Trent. I want to get over to the to the uh, Arkansas offense. So KJ Jefferson is now the new starting quarterback, taking over for one of your favorite quarterbacks, Felipe Franks. And uh, <laughs> you know Tran is a huge Felipe Franks fan, going back to his <laughs> Florida. So KJ Jefferson, 6'3", 245, big boy, Arkansas quarterback. Remember Matt Jones? Now Matt Jones was was. One of was an all timer of an athlete because he was 6'6, six, six, damn near 250, and was a what 44 inch vert, 4'4 four, four runner, was drafted in the first round to play tight end for, 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 for the Jags, wide receiver, tight end, whatever you want to call it, and was a high level basketball player in the SEC. So Matt Jones was a freak. KJ Jefferson is very athletic, 6'3, 245, mm-hmm. ran for almost 100 yards against Rice. I think he did run for 100 yards. I have him at 89. Uh, that's with the sacks, I think, though. Oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. So. so, explosive athlete. Had a, what, almost 40-yard run in the game? Yeah. So, you marry that with a good group of backs. Traylon Smith, you know, Raheem, all these guys. I'm excited to see how we – so, here's a test for our defense, right? Mobile quarterbacks have been issues – for Texas in the past. Quarterbacks that can make it happen, play breaks down, all hell breaks loose. Pete, Pete Kwiatkowski, how do we address that? Has that been solved? I'm curious to see how we uh, 
we match up against that trend. Yeah, um, I think before before we were prepping for this, that that he may be the most athletic or second most athletic uh, quarterback that we face this year. So it's going to be a huge test for us. Um, uh, we're, we we said that Spencer Sanders would probably be the the most athletic that we face. However, however, what they like to do is they honestly like to do a lot of motion just to see how the linebackers shade out and how they're um, to open up the middle of the field to give that scrambling option. Um, yeah, uh, P, P, PK is going to be huge for us here on how he how he preps for this and the entire game because they're going to they're going to try to run. They're going to try to pound the rock. Um, Smith Smith was a Smith was huge for them la, uh, in between the tackles breaks tackles. He's, he's, he's a tough yeah, runner. Man. Yeah. And we, we said in our last video that our gap gap assignments from our defensive line was subpar from our standards that we feel. And it's, it's going to get a little bit, it's going to get a little bit tougher this week with an sec offensive line. And um, you know, I, I want to see game over game, how we improve, that and you know hopefully we can uh, get hits at the at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage and <clears throat> sh uh, shorten the game for them you know I, I want to see more three three and outs if, and see put the ball in his hands to throw the ball I want him to be a passer as opposed to them just run the ball consistently so I'm going to share something here with you Tran real quick and this is a just a peek at the Arkansas offensive line. 6'6", 325, 6'5", 305, 6'4", 310, 6'4", 315, 6'9", 330. That, and, and Dalton Wagner being a redshirt senior. Now, uh, Brady Latham, I believe, is their best lineman on you know in terms of this group, and, or at least has the highest upside when you're talking about from an NFL perspective. But th when I talk about what the size of the lines that they used to have that we grew up with, this is what we're talking about when you face Arkansas teams. And this is a line they feel good about. Now, we know that the grades from week one actually weren't great, and they gave up some pressures for, for KJ. And I think our, our way to work around this is going to be uh, Ovia Gofu and some of our guys that are a little bit quicker and can get underneath some of these guys. But when we're talking about running the football and defending their run, you know, Traylon Smith and, and and what those guys present, as well as K.J. Jefferson and the quarterback run game stuff they do, they're running behind these big hog mollies up front. So uh, going to be a tough group for us to deal with. I just wanted to show that just to get a, give an idea of, of, of size, how we match up. Now, we got big boys too, right? So – you know, we feel as good about our defensive line as, as we do. We think that Alfred Collins will probably get to play a little bit more, uh, if not a whole lot more. I think whatever has been going on there, you know, they, they say there's no issues or whatever. It was just, you know, they need to get on the same page. All right, cool. You can't play Jet Bush. No disrespect, but you can't play Jet Bush 20 snaps against these dudes. You got to – you got to – this is the game you need Alfred Collins to be out there and uh, be at the, the strong at the point of attack. Now, I will say, we haven't mentioned this, Traylon Burks, 6'3", 225, outside on at, at receiver, was first team all SEC last year. So they've got some guys on the outside. Tran, you mentioned uh, Blake Kern, number 87 at tight end for Arkansas. I know he only had one catch last week, but there were some things that you noticed on film when you were reviewing I noticed the the big plays that we gave up to uh, Louisiana were little seam routes, and uh, every single time I was watching highlights for the Rice versus um, Arkansas game, he was wide open in the seam. They just didn't get him the ball. So I I just know that Kendall Bryles he 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 breaks that he he breaks film down. He's he's a great offensive mind. Say what you want about his past, etc. He's a great offensive mind, and he. He wants to beat Texas. Let's be, let's be honest. He wants to beat Texas, and you know he'll find a scheme. And if he can find any type of any type of game plan that that makes it look better, I'm not saying he's going to go off for like 600 yards against us or 200 yards against us. But 
one, I, I guarantee, you know, that it's going to be, it's going to be more than one pass attempt to him. You know, he's, it's a 6'4", 265-pound man running down the seam route. You know, it moves the chains if you get them the ball. So, And he's a, he's a senior, too, so he, he has that experience as well. Their, their, their pass-catching group is interesting because, you know, we mentioned Burks. Uh, they kind of did a swap. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a full swap, but they got the receiver Crawford, who wasn't playing over at OU, who comes over. But then their 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 guy last year, Mike Woods, transfers to OU and he played against Tulane for OU. Like they did, it's weird. That's why I was like, y'all did a swap. You have Traylon Burks there, who's you know all conference, all everything, and and you know Josh Thompson gonna have to play better if you get matched up with him. Hopefully, Shark. You know we'll see what PK does in terms of you know addressing coverages and and, and their plan for him. You think you got two tight ends because you got Blake Kern. And you also have Hudson Henry, mm-hmm. who was the younger brother of Hunter Henry, now of the New England Patriots, but made a lot has made a lot of noise when he's healthy as a very very good player on the Chargers. So, and this guy is six five two. You know, he's just like his brother. So these are guys, and and you talk about run game, right? Kern's big. He you said he was like two sixty some, Henry two fifty some. Aren't those Talk about going 12 personnel. If you're Arkansas to run the football, I mean, that is, they're going to present some things for Texas that we are going to have to overcome. And the other thing, too, uh, and that's if they go that personnel route. Kendall Browse coming from the Browse tree, that bear and shoot type of uh, mindset, you know, you kind of think of what we did with Sterling Gilbert and, and, and Deontay Foreman. Now, they're not running that, you know, rigid of what we were doing then. They do do a lot of orbit motion, like Tran mentioned, and they will utilize the middle of the field and be more diverse. But if you notice where the receivers are lining up, they are way out, right? They are still, it's still the concept of taking people away from the middle of the field, making it easier to read the numbers and playing football from there. It's a numbers game, right? So Traylon Smith, box light, boom, Traylon Smith, you're getting the ball. And then, and then on top of that, you really maximize it when you have a quarterback like KJ Jefferson, who's a runner as well. So Pete Kwiatkowski has his work cut out for him. Uh, I think this is a big game in terms of highlighting. I think our safeties are going to be a lot more involved in this game. Here's why KJ Jefferson is going to have to take a risk. I think they're going to look at that film of what Levi Lewis was doing. And if you're going to play the check down game against us and be safe, Levi Lewis played way too safe against Texas. KJ Jefferson's going to have to try stuff. Mm-hmm. He's going to have to try stuff because I think Texas will get to the point where we'll be able to at least manage their run game and try to turn the faucet off. It's going to be a challenge, especially at the beginning. But in order to really put up serious points against Texas or just completely dominate T.O.P., the quarterback's going to have to make things happen. And I saw some concerning things from KJ Jefferson in the Rice game where I don't know if he's ready to take that step yet or if he if it turns reckless and now Brennan Schooler gets involved, now B.J. Foster gets involved because, you know, they they got to kind of chill because the other quarterback last week didn't want to do anything. So I'm really, really, really curious to see how this all matches up, Tran. Let's get into um, – and and I know we I, I forgot to put up the graphic there, but in terms of matching up, we just addressed that, right? Yeah. Any other uh, you know concerns or, or, or things you want to address uh, heading into this game, fan in, in fan now? No, I mean I think I think we co- covered it. You know, it's our offensive line essentially. Uh, we need to handle our business, and uh, we we need we need to go in there and win the game. If I'm Barry Odom, especially early, I'm I'm. You know, any type of cat blitzes, uh, you know, whatever we can, you know, even, you know, a gap pressures. Let's test Jake Majors out a little bit. Junior Angelo is supposed to play. Let's test him out. There's a lot I would throw. I would throw the kitchen sink, but, you know, sending people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not typically, you know, all how he plays, but with with the tape that our offensive line just put out, I, w- I would anticipate a hundred percent test them. I would test them if, if, if I'm Barry Odom, that's just, that's just my two cents there. 
I do want to mention, uh, you know, Sark, the last thing he said was just the kids having fun. And I'm seeing that mentality permeate in our program already. Sark is a college football historian in a lot of ways. And it's really, really cool to listen to him talk when he's asked certain questions about if he's aware of a Texas tradition or if he's aware of, you know, the rivalry. And and he essentially was like, the rivalry is important outside of the context of the game. He didn't say that exactly, but I understand what he was going at, right? Because I'm locked in with Sark mentally, right? Listen, not only does he understand the rivalry, but he was actually throwing out some tidbits and all this type of stuff. But he was like, at the end of the day, when I'm watching film, I'm looking at numbers and where people are lining up. The rivalry is not running through my head. And what essentially he's saying was each week, that's how you build consistency regardless of the opponent. You're not looking at the front of the jersey. I'm looking at the number of the player and who I'm trying to exploit and find weaknesses or, hey, we need to avoid this person. That's why I think you see they take Louisiana so seriously, whereas the previous staff would play up and down, right? And I'm not saying down, but like, hey, we want to go ahead and install for USC and go all out now. Or we want to install for this opponent and go all out now. And I'm looking at Steve Sarkeesian. Steve Sarkeesian is just like, we prep each week based on the numbers. I think that was a really, really insightful thing that he said. Um, but he wasn't being, you know, he wasn't saying the rivalry doesn't matter or anything like that, but he's saying in order for us to do our job, that's what we have to pay attention to. Now, players, we're going on a fun road trip. It's going to be a lot of noise. Y'all going to hear a lot of haters. Let's have fun. Embrace it. Remember this. These are memories. You'll be able to tell your kids, I played at, at, at that stadium or what have you. Just big picture perspective that he has after what he's been through. And I think it's really cool to hear our head coach speak that way. Tran, what's your prediction for the game? Uh, honestly, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 35, 24, Texas. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game than we'd hope it would be because I, I just think it's that they're a run heavy team and it's just going to keep the clock running. I have, I have a feeling that we, we will uh, get, get a turnover as well. So you, I'm going to go. Um, and, and I think this is, is going to be an interesting game from a standpoint of, time of possession. I think I think you're right. I think Arkansas is going to try to possess the football because Steve Sarkeesian right now is so hot with what he's doing offensively. If he gets enough plays, he'll, he's going to crack your code really fast, and it's going to be an issue. And I think last, last year, the Alabama-Arkansas game, Alabama ran the hell out of the football. Mac Jones didn't even throw a touchdown pass in that game. I don't, I don't even think he threw for 300 yards. They, they, they were just able to really handle them on the ground. And, of course, they had the big punt return for a touchdown. The game was out of hand. I have the score. I have Texas winning in Fayetteville. I think we're going to be nervous for a couple quarters. I think there's, you know, the anxiety. Our players, we're, we also, because we've been talking about college football right now, right, the big picture of college football and these environments. We have players on our team who have not played in an environment like this before. We do have experience. We have people that have, but we have players on our team who have not played in front of a crowd like this before, who have not been on the road before. Real heat. Um, last season doesn't count in that regard for the younger guys. So I expect there to be, you know, hey, you know, I'm a little nervous and I may have forgotten my assignment. I'm, I'm giving some margin there. My score, 28-17. I do think Pete Kwiatkowski is still going to hold them under 20 because I think KJ is going to have to try to do something and we're going to get some turnovers. We're going to get the turnovers we weren't able to get last week because the quarterback didn't want to take any chances. I think this guy has to. But the thing is, this guy is way less experienced than the guy from last week. And I think we're going to have some opportunities there. I have 28-17 just because I think we are going to be – we're going to have limited time with the football. I do think we're going to have some three and outs. And, uh, but overall, you know, as the game goes on, 
run game again. I think Bijan Robinson's going to have another game over 100 yards, over 150 total yards, a couple touchdowns. And I think Jer- Jordan Whittington keeps it rolling. Um, you know, Brooks is a really good nickel corner. Uh, 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 I like Bishop. I know Bishop got – I don't know if he got beat or if there was miscommunication on the deep ball touchdown that Rice threw. Somebody from Arkansas can chime in the comments there. But I like – I just like our guys. I, I like them heading into this environment, this situation. I think we come up with the dub, 28-17. So I actually going – very rare that I have a lower score than you. That is rare. You're normal – because you're a, you're the defensive guy. Um, but, I mean, overall, I mean, for, for Steve Sarkeesian team and whatnot, 35-24 or 28-17, those are low scoring, you know, relative to how things have typically been. You guys, make sure you hit us with your predictions in the comments. And if you want to take your our predictions to heart, make sure you hit up BUSR. BUSR is the official sponsor, sports book, and betting partner of Fanatic Perspective. In all seriousness, though, like if you, you know, y'all ready to put some bread up, let's do it. BUSR slash Fanatic sign up, promo code NFL100FP, 100% free play. So you can sign up right now, deposit $100, deposit $200, get that matched. Take some of that free play money and put it down on Texas. Or if you're a Hog fan, you can take some, put some money on Arkansas to cover or even win outright on the money line and then come back and hit up your boy in the comments. Love to have you. So, guys, we appreciate it. As always, Tran, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, I also have one other tidbit. There won't be a live show after the game. And I've been waiting. I haven't. I've been uh, not waiting, but I haven't wanted to make this announcement since I found out about this. But uh, I'm not going to be able to watch the game live at all. And uh, you know, unfortunately, your boy's in a wedding uh, that night, as kickoff is going to happen. So uh, I'm going to miss the game. I have it recorded. We'll be on the DVR, so I will break the game and watch it in its entirety as soon as I get back to my hotel. And uh, we'll probably have to react, I would say, Sunday morning. Uh, and I'll do it from the hotel room. And I love my best friend, but I cussed him out as soon as I found out about this, <laughs> as soon as I found this information. Now, he can validate that over the summer. Uh, his name is Jolly, by the way. That's his real name. He told me that I'm allowed to, to call him out on the channel and he apologizes for taking me away from my duties, but uh, I have to see them get married. And it's one of those things where COVID pushed the wedding back a whole year. So here we are on September 11th and this is happening and I'm not happy about it. Same thing with me and, uh, in the OU game. Right, right. You're <laughs> in a wedding on, uh, on October 9th. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we have to deal with these obstacles as they come up. And uh, I wish I, I wish I could be more engaged. You know, I might figure something out. They might have a TV there. You never know. You never know. But um, won't be able to see the game live. So that sucks. But once I watch and once I get up with Tran, we'll have content as always and react to it. Yes, sir. Arkansas fans, uh, welcome. And, And all of our college football fans out there and everybody watching us, you know, Again, like we said at the beginning of the video, please reflect on September 11th and, and, and you know, just where we are as a country. And, um, you know, again, shout out to our sponsors, BUSR, the official sports book and betting partner for Night Perspective. That's it. Let's go get a dub. Guys, remember, horn's always up. <laughs>